Hello and welcome to TRB Collectibles. My name's Tom and I will be your guide through how to pack and ship a tennis racket. Today we're going to be packing this head brand tennis racket, the iRadical. First things first, we want to make sure that we properly protect our tennis racket, so therefore we're going to get some bubble wrap. You can choose whether or not you use small, medium, or large bubble wrap. I like to use small because it works on a variety of different objects. And I lay it on the table almost like it's wrapping paper. I tape it together so it's easy that I can literally fold the tennis racket over and over again to get the most amount of protection for it, especially when I put it in the box. I really don't want anything to rattle, bump, break, or scrape, so I'm going to make sure that I cover the entire tennis racket in bubble wrap. So I'm not only going to put the tennis racket in with the bubble wrap as you see it now, I'm going to make sure that I tape it shut and it stays in place. You have to look at it from the buyer's perspective. When they open the box, they have the confidence in the way that you packed it. I'm going to fold over the corners to give it extra protection so that there's no bumps or scratches. So this way it can take a little bit more of an impact if it happens to do so. One thing you're gonna notice if you're familiar with selling tennis rackets or you play tennis in general, that grip definitely a 100% needs to be replaced. In tennis, replacing a grip is rather easy and depending on the grip that you choose to rewrap it, it can be pretty, pretty cheap or it could be very expensive. I personally do not rewrap the handle of the tennis racket because more than likely the person that's buying the racket itself will replace it on their own whether or not it's new because it fits their comfort level. So I make sure in my listing that I tell them that it is a used grip that needs to be replaced. And nine times out of 10, they'll still buy it anyway. But I'm still gonna take the time to make sure that I wrap it so it doesn't get damaged in the process of it shipping. So once you have your tennis racket packed in bubble wrap, it's time to find a box for it. And in this case, I've decided to go with the USPS provided 1095 box. You can find these in store or online and they will ship them home to you. In this case, my box is a little bit too small for the length of this tennis racket. So I have to do a technique called Frankenboxing, where you take two different boxes, put them together to create one brand new box because the item that you want to ship doesn't necessarily fit in the one that you actually wanted to ship it in. In this case, for tennis rackets, I find that these boxes are the easiest because it not only fits the head of the tennis racket, but it fits the length of them as well. You could also use the 1092 box, which easily slides in the 1095, but since I only had two 1095 boxes today, that's what I went with. To make your life a little bit easier before you connect the boxes together, go ahead and take your padding and put it in your bottom box. Do you necessarily have to put padding in your box? No. Will the tennis racket survive with the bubble? Yeah, but it'll bounce around. And for me, I'm always going to put padding on it so it doesn't move around. And I'll put it on all four sides. And in a moment, you'll see me shake the box to make sure that the tennis racket holds up pretty well. So now that we have the tennis racket secure in the first box, we're going to go ahead and grab the second box so we can make the first box a little bit longer to accommodate the length of the tennis racket. Did I speed this clip up? Of course I did. But did I want to show you in its entirety that Frankenboxing is not the easiest thing in the world? Yes. But this is the truthful, honest answer. Frankenboxing can save you when you don't have a box that you need. Now, once you slide the box down to the desired length, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that I've reached the top of the tennis racket. That is where I'm going to go ahead and solidify the boxes together to make one box, completing the Frankenstein box. So I use the existing box to tape it to the other box itself, but I'm also going to add additional tape. It just makes the package more secure when it ships. 
This is when I go ahead and grab my tape and make sure that the two boxes are well secured together so when they ship, they do not come apart. Do I tape a lot when I Frankenstein boxes? Yes. Is it necessary? It just depends on the person that puts them together. For me, it's the idea that my package potentially could go through rain or it could be outside and weather that the tape could fall apart and more the better. I want to make sure that when my buyer gets the box, the product will be okay when they get it. So now that the two boxes have become one, they are well secured, it's time to go ahead and make sure we can secure the top of the racket like we did the bottom half and add a little bit more paper on all sides so it doesn't move around. Something that I started doing was I add my business card for TRB collectibles right inside the package. So when my buyer opens it, they see how they can connect with me, whether it be on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, and still see my eBay store. They associate me with my product that I've sold them. So if I sell them a product that's well packaged and got to them safely, it gives them a little bit of trust. And by showing them that I have a YouTube channel, it goes even further building that relationship with your buyer. Now that we have our tennis racket all packaged up, we're going to go ahead and measure and weigh it. It looks like it's 30 inches long, rounded up. Thirteen inches wide, rounded up. And four inches high, round it up. I'm gonna take my scale, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, place it on a flat surface, and let it come to a complete zero. I'm then gonna go ahead, grab my package, place it on top, give it a moment to find its true weight, and round up to the closest pound, making it two pounds. Now you're gonna log on to eBay, get to the shipping page, and it should look similar to this. Over to the right, you're gonna see the order details, for the specific item that you're selling. In this case, mine is a tennis racket. In the custom SKU field, I input the type of item that it is and how much my initial buy cost is. It's also gonna show you the quantity of how many items that you're selling of the same type and how much the buyer paid specifically for that single item. The reason I pre-weigh and measure every one of my items and then do it again after it sells is to make sure I'm correctly putting in all the information. It never hurts to double check yourself. The first being if the USPS notices I've input incorrect information into the system, they could potentially charge my buyer the fees for my mistake, and I don't want that for them. The second being free shipping. I tend not to offer it on calculated shipping. The reason being there are too many variables, especially if a buyer lives farther away at the end of the day, it's all about the margins and the profit that you could make on eBay. And if they live farther away, that's going to be more shipping costs for you, lowering your profit. I'd probably only offer free shipping on fixed items like flat rate because I know exactly what the price point is going to be so I can build it into my cost. With the information that we gathered earlier under package, we're going to go ahead and take the weight and the dimensions of that package and enter it here. Until we enter that information into the package category, the shipping service category will say no services available with no price quote in the right hand corner. We now go back to the package category to enter the information for the package. The weight being 2 pounds, the dimensions being 30 inches by 13 inches by 4 inches rounded to the nearest inch. By doing that, you're now going to see the shipping service category has updated with different shipping services based on the weight and dimensions of your package to see different shipping options. Now, in addition to the buy cost of the item, I also charge shipping on top. Depending on the type of item, I might only offer USPS priority mail, first class mail, or media mail. You also have the option of selecting FedEx 
or UPS. It's all really based on weight and dimension and giving your buyer the best price available. If you only choose free shipping, you're the one that's going to select which shipping option that you're going to send to the buyer. But in this case, since I only offered priority mail, my buyer selected USPS priority mail. Over to the right of their selection, you're going to see the price point being $10.64, which will be in addition to what they paid for the item. Once you select your shipping service, there are a couple additional options, like requiring a signature at delivery, adding additional liability coverage just in case you have that valuable item on eBay that you want to make sure is covered when it ships. You can also display postage value on label, add custom text on label, and add a message in the dispatch confirmation email. Once you select your additional options, you can go to shipping label format and either have a printable label printed at home so you can ship on your own, or have a QR code that you can pull up on your mobile device or print to bring to the United States Postal Service to have them print out your label and attach it to your package. Our last step. You have to choose your form of payment to pay for your shipping label today, whether it be pay with pending payouts or your saved PayPal account. Pending payouts is where eBay holds the funds that your buyer has paid for your item as well as paid for the shipping. When you're going through the shipping process, the funds are always available to make sure that this can happen. So by selecting pending payouts, you're just utilizing the funds that the buyer has paid for the shipping already. The remaining funds that the buyer paid for the item with will then be placed on a hold until the item is delivered. They are then transferred to the bank account that's placed on file. To provide you with the most accurate information possible for this video, as of April 2022, the United States Postal Service is implementing two new kinds of fees. The first being Dimension Non-Compliance Fee. It would add $1.50 for commercial parcels that exceed 1 cubic foot or with the length greater than 22 inches. If the customer did not provide dimensions or provided inaccurate dimensions in the electronic manifest file. The second being non-standard fees. Anything between 22 inches to 30 inches would be an additional $4 per parcel, and anything exceeding 30 inches will be an additional $15 per parcel. The reason I bring you this information is because if you plan on shipping tennis rackets, they tend to be 30 inches in length as far as for the boxes. That would be an additional $4 with every tennis racket that you ship. It's just something to keep in mind. For additional information, please see the link below. And there you have it. You've taken your tennis racket, packaged it up, purchased its shipping label, and it should be headed out the door. Congratulations. If you had any questions or comments about something I didn't cover in this video, please be sure to leave it down below. I'm still more than happy to help if you need some. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to click that like button. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Thank you. Before you head out, if you'd like, feel free to check out some of the other videos posted right here. Thanks!